It's been a big security challenge for Nigeria. The abduction of some schoolgirls from Government College Chibok in Borno State gets the nation in pains and the families of the abducted girls in total disarray. Eight years later, over a hundred of these girls have still not been accounted for. But as recently as October 2022, more girls continue to surface following daring escapes from captivity. But there is one problem. The girls may still not receive the education they desire, despite massive government investments. Checks made by Human Angle of Nigeria's federal budgets showed that over 1 billion was approved between 2017 and 2022 for capital projects related to the schoolgirls under the Ministry of Women's Affairs. In 2017, 5 million naira was approved to support the families of the girls who had escaped and those still in abduction, and 38 million was approved for reintegration programs for the girls who regained freedom. In 2018, 420 million naira was approved for the empowerment and rehabilitation of women and other vulnerable groups, including Chibok girls. In 2020, 360 million was approved for the Chibok girls' specialized education program. In 2022, an additional 214.5 million naira was approved for the specialized education program. The Specialized Education Program refers to a pre-degree academic program at the American University of Nigeria, where many of the girls are currently enrolled. The program, which takes several years, is designed to equip them for life as undergraduates. The government has continued to pay for their tuition, while also giving them a monthly allowance of 25,000 naira. But the girls have several complaints. During interviews with about 10 of the Chibok girls this year, they mentioned that government did not consider their wishes in choosing a school for them. Many of them feel out of place. The scholarship is also insufficient. They cannot afford to buy all the books they need or pay student association levies. Many of them do not have functioning laptops, even though tests are conducted and assignments are submitted through an online application. Several of the girls have dropped out due to discrimination, pressure, and not being able to study the courses of their choice. AUN, for example, does not offer medicine or nursing programs. Data obtained by Human Angle in April revealed that about 28 of the girls had left school. Out of the 28, 17 were married and three were set to wed. Provisions have also not been made for the Chibok girls who gave birth while they were held captive. Their children's education is neglected by the authorities and they are left to sort this out using their monthly stipend. Checks of its website and social media accounts show that the Ministry of Women Affairs has not published detailed information about how it is spending money allocated to the schoolgirls and their parents. But while the Chippewa girls have received some form of support from the federal authorities, a look through budgets approved between 2015 and 2022 showed no similar provisions made for victims of other major school attacks, such as the over 100 girls abducted in Dubchi in February 2018 or the 59 boys killed in Buniyadi in 2014. In 2022, however, 20 million naira was budgeted for the supply of empowerment materials to insurgency victims in Buniyadi, Yobe State. The absence of a more elaborate rehabilitation system has made the victims of these terror attacks to rely on donations from public figures and private individuals. The Bring Back Our Girls movement, which has advocated for the rescue and care of the Chibok girls since 2014, states as part of its demands, making available a comprehensive program for recovery, rehabilitation, resettlement and reintegration to the rescued citizens. The rehabilitation, resettlement and reintegration following their authentication should be implemented by both the Borno State Government and the Federal Government that make up the VARS team and supported by development partners, NGOs and public-spirited Nigerians. This is part 8 of our video series explaining insecurity drivers in northern Nigeria. We're breaking down major indicators of violent conflict and covering the communities most impacted by it. With support from the MacArthur Foundation, Human Angle is working to strengthen investigative and data-driven journalism in order to reduce corruption.